So today is March 1st, and I have here another seed order. So this is the third one. Um, this will be the last one. <laughs> I've ordered a little bit uh, more than usual this year. Just so excited about the garden. I couldn't help myself. I have the packing slip here. I ordered 10 packs of seeds. It was twenty six forty. I ordered it on February 22nd, and they were here yesterday, which was February 28th. So this is the cute little box it comes in. This will be good for storing your seeds. And then it comes with a seed starting guide, which is really cool. And then we'll go through all of the seeds that I have. Yeah, I've never ordered seeds that came in a box they usually always come in an envelope like a padded envelope so that was cool so first one the mouse melon the cucumelon the mexican sour gherkin um i planted this in 2021 these were really cool my daughter and husband loved them they're actually little cucumbers um, I believe, but they're really, really tiny, and there's a lot of information on these seed packets, too. Um, they look like little watermelons. Um, I planted a couple of these, like, maybe, I'm gonna say around four plants, maybe, and they took over the entire cow panel trellis system that I have going on in my garden. I have three of them, and they just took over everything there were <laughs> cucumelons everywhere I mean we would bring in bowls and bowls of them so yeah I'll be planting some of those this year um, the other cucumelons that I planted were from Baker Creek so we'll see how these do this is the Minnesota midget cantaloupe I'm going to I'll uh, intermix these this year with my Sugar Baby Watermelon and my Kajari Melon. So these, I thought these were really cool. They are somewhere I saw. But they're around like, okay, four inch fruit, sweet and juicy. So they're little tiny, personal sized uh, cantaloupe, not really big. Um, I'll be growing these on the cow panel trellis thought these were really cool and then the hollyhocks black hollyhock I don't believe that these will bloom the first year but I think they're biannual I've seen many many different um many different videos that say many different things they bloom the first year they don't bloom the first year they're biannuals which means they bloom the second year um and they drop seed so we'll see about this but i really want to have some of these in the garden um i thought they were so beautiful and apparently they're edible somebody has said they're edible um don't know about that i'll have to do some more research but these are just so gorgeous if you watch any videos on youtube look at the black hollyhock they were ju they're just so crazy looking really beautiful and then we have the peach melba nasturtium as you know nasturtium the entire plant is edible the leaves the flowers you can make a nice salad really beautiful um Tastes a bit peppery like watercress, adding a kick of flavor and color to salads, attracts pollinators and beneficial insects. Um, usually grown as an annual, perennial in zones 10 and warmer, fairly drought resistant, rabbit and deer resistant. So that's really cool. And then, um, I usually only have like the red and orange nasturtium, so I wanted to get something a little different. Um, and then, I wanted to try the vining trailing nasturtium so thought this would be really cool to put in like some hanging baskets or try to trail it up some trellis 
trellises out in the garden. I just love the look of these. The the green foliage in these plants, they look like uh like lily pads. And <laughs> they're really really like circular lily pad looking shape, so something different. I always thought these were really cool. I love these. And then apparently, if I remember correctly, they're also like a good trap crop of uh, to keep certain insects away from your vegetables. So, but I always have some of these in the garden. I just love these. They're so cool. And then I got the Queenie Lime Orange Zinnia. So, I don't know if you can tell, but the center of these are green. And then the outside is a really bright fluorescent orange. Um, always see pictures of these zinnias. Always have wanted to try them. They're so expensive though. They're like, this pack was $6.29. And it's actually in like a little tiny thing here. But yeah, I hope these um, actually look like all the pictures that I've seen because they are so beautiful. They have queen lime blush, queen lime red, queenie lime orange. Um, I can't wait to see these. These are so, so beautiful. The shape, the color, the height. I love everything about them. And then I grabbed these. I love salmon colored flowers. They look pink here. But these are the Senora Zinnias, and they are the most beautiful, like, salmon-y, orangey pink. Um, I thought these were so gorgeous. Um, so, yeah, these will be, like, the pom-pom shaped, just like the queen lime orange. But my favorite color, this is actually my husband's favorite flower, too, so I always like to grow some cool varieties of that. Black Eyed Susan Vine. I don't know anything about this. I need to do some research, but I've always wanted, every time I go to the nursery, like our local plant nursery, I always see a Black Eyed Susan Vine in there, and I always want it, and it's always crazy expensive, so I'm going to try to grow my own. Um, and I love vining plants. I love, love, love. Those are my favorite, like Morning Glories, Moonflowers, um, Cypress Vine, Cardinal Climber, the Nasturtium. I know I love that. Black Eyed Susan. I just love, 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 love vines for some reason. I think they're just so like cottagey, um, gorgeous, gorgeous flowers. And then the Holy Basil or Tulsi. I always hear gardeners rave about this. Um, I want to have some of this in the garden. It's supposed to smell, it's distinguished by its bubblegum scent, frost tolerance, and fast growing nature. So a lot of people make teas out of this. Um, I would love to just have something in the garden that smells like bubblegum. So I don't plan on using any basil. I always grow tons of basil, but then end up never doing anything with it. So... Just growing it for the smell and look and possible tea. So, and then we have the Green Globe Improved Artichoke. I've watched a ton of different videos that say that it won't bloom the first year. And then I watched Garden Answer and she's in a zone that's actually colder than mine. Um, zone 5. I'm in zone 6. Uh... Hers bloomed the first year. I want to grow these for the flowers because the flowers are absolutely beautiful. They're so different. They look like they belong like on an alien planet. Really beautiful blue, like a bee magnet. Um, of course, I would try to have a couple of the artichokes as a little treat, but more so for the flowers. I don't know if I'll be able to get them to grow. They probably already should have been planted by now because they do take um, 150 to 180 days. So I'm going to actually plant these today. It's March 1st. Um, and I'll see if I can get a little, a little bit to bloom 
before the fall sets in. So, again, a lot of these plants that I ordered here, I don't know that much about, like the nasturtiums, the vining nasturtium, the black-eyed Susan, um, never grown this, the, the hollyhock, I've never grown this. So a lot of these are first-time uh, things for me. So we'll see how they turn out, but I'm so excited. The garden should be so beautiful this year, especially with all these new flowers. Um, hopefully I can get the hollyhocks to bloom. If not, it'll be something to look forward to next year. But yeah, that is my botanical interest uh, seed haul. And I will do a video when I plant some of these seeds.